Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share some devotionals with all of you. The first one is titled, What Does the Bible Say About Low Self-Esteem? While the Bible warns us to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought, there are some who deny the value God places on each of us as his children People who struggle to have a healthy perspective about themselves often have experienced serious pain from rejection in their lives. The Bible reminds us, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 We need to remember that a loving Heavenly Father brought us life. When we give our lives to him, we are adopted into his family. John 1 12 tells us that when we receive Christ, we are given the right to become God's children. What a high privilege! There is no one else in all the universe just like you. He saw you before you were born. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 verses 13 and 14. The Lord personally knows you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Isaiah 43 verse 1 But, you say, you don't understand. God cannot love me. You don't know what I've done, where I've been, and what I am really like deep down inside. My background is so broken. My body is deformed and my personality is simply obnoxious. God loves nice people, but he couldn't love me. To such people, I would say, not according to the Bible. Notice the word of the Apostle Paul, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. Yes, God really does love you. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1, verse 12. And that is the end of the first one. And the second one is titled, With Nature and with God. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. Mark 1, verse 35. The childhood of Jesus, spent in poverty, had been uncorrupted by the artificial habits of a corrupt age. Working at the carpenter's bench, bearing the burdens of home life, learning the lessons of obedience and toil, he found recreation amidst the scenes of nature gathering knowledge as he sought to understand nature's mysteries. He studied the word of God, and his hours of greatest happiness were found when he could turn aside from the scene of his labors to go into the fields, to meditate in the quiet valleys, to hold communion with God on the mountainside or amid the trees of the forest. The early morning often found him in some secluded place, meditating, searching the scriptures, or in prayer. With the voice of singing, he welcomed the morning light. 
with songs of thanksgiving he cheered his hours of labor and brought heaven's gladness to the toil worn and disheartened during his ministry jesus lived to a great degree an outdoor life his journeys from place to place were made on foot and much of his teaching was given in the open air in training his disciples he often withdrew from the confusion of the city to the quiet of the fields as more in harmony with the lessons of simplicity faith and self abnegation he desired to teach them it was beneath the sheltering trees of the mountainside but a little distance from the sea of galilee that the twelve were called to the apostolate and the sermon on the mount was given christ loved to gather the people about him under the blue heavens on some grassy hillside or on the beach beside the lake here surrounded by the works of his own creation he could turn their thoughts from the artificial to the natural in the growth and development of nature were revealed the principles of his kingdom as men should lift their eyes to the hills of god and behold the wonderful works of his hand they could learn precious lessons of divine truth in future days the lessons of the divine teacher would thus be repeated to them by the things of nature the mind would be uplifted and the heart would find rest and that is the end of the second one and the last one i'd like to share with you is titled give god the glory whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of god first corinthians 10 verse 31 jesus alone is to be exalted whatever may be the ability or the success of any one of us it is not because we have manufactured these powers ourselves they are the sacred trust given us of god to be wisely employed in his service to his glory all is the lord's entrusted capital why then should we be lifted up why should we call attention to our own defective selves what we do possess in talent and wisdom is received from the source of wisdom that we may glorify god pride of talent pride of intellect cannot exist in hearts that are hid with christ in god then let us humble ourselves and adore jesus but never never exalt self in the least degree if the motive of all our life is to serve and honor Christ and bless humanity in the world, then the dreariest path of duty will become a bright way, a path cast up for the ransomed of the Lord to walk in. And that is the end of these devotionals. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you, and I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.